Welcome to the virtual college exploration for all West Virginia students sponsored by the West Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Officers and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of the many sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at wvacrao.org. This presentation is being recorded and can also be found at that same website. So now I would like to go ahead and turn it over to our presenters. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dwayne Ewing. I'm an admissions counselor here with WVU Tech. Uh, give me just one moment here and we will get this presentation started. Let me sh share my screen. Okay, so welcome. Um, so we're gonna go through a brief presentation about WVU Tech here this evening. So uh, we will also have a, a Q and A portion. I'll try to leave some time here at the end of the presentation. Um, and also there's a chat feature and I have my colleague here, Jordan Smith. He's also an admissions counselor, senior here with WVU Tech. He'll be standing by to help uh, answer and facilitate any questions. And then of course, if there's any questions that, that don't get asked or if a question occurs to you later, I'll have some contact information here at the end of the presentation for you to reach out to us. So again, that's Jordan Smith. This is the fellow that's gonna be helping me out this evening here. Howdy everyone. And uh, this is myself, Dwayne Ewing, admissions counselor here at Tech. So we'll just start off here talking about this here. So W is statewide. Um, of course, most of you are more familiar with our uh, larger institution in Morgantown, West Virginia, the flagship uh, of the WVU system. So we have uh, WVU, we have W Tech here in Beckley, and we have Potomac State College in Kaiser, as well as uh, Health uh, Sciences Resources in Charleston and in Martinsburg. Uh, we are approximately 1,700 students here at the Beckley campus, 35 plus majors, and a lot of things for our students to choose from. So this will give you kind of a bird's eye view of campus. Uh, the street there in the foreground is South Carolina Street in Uptown Beckley, for those of you familiar with Uptown Beckley. Um, you'll see Carter Hall there to the lower right. That's where we typically would have um, students on campus and do uh, presentations and things like that. It is a central uh, gathering point there on campus for us. So uh, in normal circumstances, that's where we'd be. The admissions house is just directly across there, the little greenhouse directly across from Carter Hall. And as you go on down into campus, you'll see uh, our residence halls in the very back and in to the uh, left, as well as the main campus and the parking areas and everything there included. So we are located in the heart of Uptown Beckley. So a little bit of information about Beckley and the campus community. So we have approximately 17,000 population in Beckley proper. Uh, we are the ninth largest city in West Virginia. Uh, we have a 29 acre campus, as I said, located in the heart of downtown Beckley, West Virginia. Uh, we're close proximity to shopping, dining, hotels, and other various points of interest. Um, we always like to talk about during our presentations, there's a, a numerous eating opportunities and things to do around campus, as well as a very good dining hall too. We'll talk more about that as we kind of move through the presentation. Um, WVU offers uh, the following on the Beckley campus. Uh, we have the W Launch Lab, which is a small business incubator that uh, is very useful resource for our students to have on campus to help you launch businesses, uh, assistance writing a business plan, securing venture capital funding, those sorts of things. We also have the W Law Clinic, School of Nursing, and we have the uh, Health Sciences and Technology Academy. Those of you that are familiar with that, uh, it's referred to as HISTA. We also have the WVU Extension Service for Raleigh County and the W School of Medicine is represented on campus as well. So this is a campus map that gives you kind of an idea. Um, this is kind of uh, the bird's eye view that you saw a few slides prior. Um, you kind of look at this from the back facing forward to Kanawha Street. Uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of perspective there. And as I said, Carter Hall was there at number three, and then you see our residence halls at number 11 and number 23. And then we have our kind of the heart of campus there is uh, 12 with the Robert C. Bird Learning Resources Center. That includes the library, the Bears Den Dining Hall. We also have the physical sciences building that's adjacent. And uh, that's kind of the rundown of campus there, just kind of a bird's eye view. So for a little historical perspective, um, 
WVU Tech has been around since 1895, although maybe not in that iteration. I think it was the Montgomery Preparatory Academy originally, and then WV Tech when we were absorbed in the WVU system in the late 90s, we've been WVU Tech from there on forward. Um, as I said, 1700 plus students. So to kind of give you a breakdown there, uh, as you would imagine, we are a pretty STEM heavy school. We have a lot of engineering and sciences represented at our campus. So it's it's interesting and worthy to know that we do see a 52 to 48 uh, female to male breakdown there on our campus. Uh, we do have uh, quite a bit of diversity on our campus and we celebrate that. Uh, we also have 50% of our students are out of state representing 30 plus states. Uh, 50 plus West Virginia counties are represented. We have 9% of our student body are international students representing 30 plus countries, as well as 70% minority population on campus. So we are a very diverse campus, especially given our smaller size. Um, so there are two academic colleges at WVU Tech. And the way that I like to explain this to folks is that all of our majors will reside under one or two of those colleges. It's you're still part of WVU Tech. Just the difference is, is that is where your academic home as it were would be your dean, et cetera. So we have the College of Business, Humanities and Social Sciences, which we refer to as BHSS. And we also have the Leonard C. Nelson College of Engineering and Sciences. Uh, over 35 academic programs of study. We have a small student to faculty ratio of approximately 12 to one. Our average class size is approximately 17 students. We have a very experienced faculty, with an average of 12.5 years of service and we have 18 NAI athletic teams and 40 plus student organizations. That just kind of gives you a broad overview of us. So some of the achievements that we would like to highlight here is uh, we have seen, uh, we've been very fortunate, we've seen a consistent annual increase in enrollment since approximately 2012. So, and we are also ranked number one in West Virginia for student return on investment by pay scale. And that is as of 2020, as of this year. And that's a very important thing to highlight because um, a very good uh, investment for the student and a very good payoff. We also have nine engineering programs, as I'd mentioned that we are, in, of course, a STEM heavy institution, and they are all ABET accredited. For those of you not familiar with ABET, ABET is the Accreditation Board of Engineering and Technology. It is the gold standard of the engineering accreditation. So we're also ranked in the top 100 list of best undergraduate engineering programs by US News and World Report. Uh, we're ranked in the top five for international student enrollment by the Open Doors Data Report as of 2017, the most recent data that we had available. And we're ranked in the top 15% for salary potential among four-year colleges and universities in the United States. Again, that goes back to the value to the student that a WU Tech education affords. So to give you an overview of our new student profile, this is just um, kind of a thing to give you an idea of where students are when they uh, enroll at WU Tech. So our top five states for enrollment, uh, you, as you would imagine, West Virginia, there being number one. Uh, also some other states here that you may or may not uh, be surprised to find in the top five states, uh, Virginia, Maryland, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Um, we used to have um, some other states that were into those categories, such as Texas and North Carolina. Uh, we do have a, a very vibrant athletics program, so that uh, also accounts for some of our uh, geographic diversity. Uh, 50 of 55 counties here in West Virginia are represented, with the average uh, entering uh, grade point average for fall 2020 was a 3.59. So the average entering ACT score for fall 20 was a 20.5, and an average entering SAT score for fall 20 was a 10.50. So these are very strong academics here, and we pride ourselves on that here at Tech. We have a distinguished faculty at WVU Tech. As I was alluding to prior, uh, we have 87 full-time faculty members, and no classes are taught by graduate or teaching assistants. Their primary duty is to teach here at Tech, and you will get that one-on-one -on -one instruction with your professors and you'll develop a personal relationship with them. And we definitely encourage you to do that. Um, that will definitely contribute to your success as a college student as you work your way throughout your academic career here with us. Uh, have a very experienced faculty with an average of 9.6 years of service. Our primary responsibility is to teach and advise as I was alluding to prior. Uh, PhDs, uh, degree holders that we have by college and school, uh, business humanities and social sciences is 19 out of 30. 
uh, the Leonard C. Nelson College of Engineering and Sciences is 48 out of 49, and the School of Nursing is one out of eight. It's a very, very good and distinguished faculty here at Tech. So just kind of give you a broad overview of our programs of study here that we're looking at. So um, we have 35 plus programs of study, as I had mentioned prior. Uh, the one thing that I will highlight initially here, you'll see hospitality. It's a culinary program. It's a two-year program. Uh, it's applied via, via a W. Uh, Kaiser Potomac State application. You will attend on the WVU Beckley campus. And the reason for that is we have very outstanding uh, hospitality and cooking facilities uh, that students can utilize. And uh, we have a lot of knowledge information to share there. So you can kind of take a look and see we have everything from accounting to adventure recreation. Uh, we also have an aerospace engineering in addition to our other engineering programs. And just to, to fully explain that, that's a two plus two, meaning that is two years on our Beckley campus that you will be spending with us and two years on the Morgantown campus where you would complete your degree. That gives you an opportunity to be at a smaller school initially to make that transition to college. And then as you move throughout um, your college career, you would transition to a bigger campus like Morgantown, so that way you would be able to have that initial start at a smaller school. Uh, we also have aviation management, uh, chemical engineering. Uh, we also have construction management. That's a newer program for us as well. Uh, Health Services Administration, history and government. Uh, we do have the BSN nursing program that is available. It is a W program it is available on our campus. And uh, we also have sport management, just to name a few. That kind of gives you an idea of what we have to offer here at Tech. A little bit of something for everyone. So you'll see the information here regarding our pre-professional tracks. And what those are is, say you're pre preparing for medicine or pharmacy, veterinary, dental, law. Um, Pre-medicine, most of our students would be biology majors, for instance. Uh, Pre-pharmacy, uh, most of our students would be chemistry majors, to give you an idea, and et cetera. Uh, Pre-law is a little bit different in that um, we have students that will come from a variety of different backgrounds before they would decide to attend law school. Anything from business management to accounting to you can basically attend any undergraduate major and then go to law school so long as you meet the requirements for the GPA and the LSAT, which is law school admissions test. Campus housing, we do have two residence halls on the Beckley campus. Hogan Hall and University Hall. Uh, they're both living and learning environments. Uh, Hogan is the older of the two, but it, it was completed mid 90s and University Hall was completed in 2010. So both very new spacious facilities, uh, very comfortable facilities for our students. Uh, they're staffed by full-time live-in professional resident directors as well as student resident assistants. That way if students have any questions or concerns or uh, should require any help at all, uh, there's always help available there in the residence halls. Uh, they're equipped with wireless high-speed internet, cable television access, study areas, fitness rooms, laundry facilities, and community game rooms. Um, now we do have a, uh, for the gamers here that are on campus, we do have a dedicated high-speed uh, wireless internet uh, connection dedicated for gamers. So there's ample bandwidth for everyone to be able to take advantage of anywhere on campus. A little bit about dining services now, as I'd alluded to earlier. So we do have the Bears Den Dining Hall on campus. It is in the Robert C. Bird Learning Resource Center located off of South Canal Street. So it is, uh, is it a full service? Award-winning dining services available for both residential and commuter students. Uh, you can also do it uh, a la carte, as you say. Um, so if students are commuters and they don't want to purchase a commuter plan, they don't have to, although we encourage them to. Uh, there may be a little bit more value there for you depending on when you're on campus and your schedule. Um, but you can take a look at these here. We offer the 10, 15, and 19 meal plan per week, um, and that those prices are per semester. And of course, for a commuter, we do the 25, 50, and 80 meals. And we also have the Tech Spot, which is a very popular place on campus. It's their coffee shop. So we have Starbucks offerings there, uh, all their products, as well as pre-practice sandwiches and snacks. So you can use your dining plan with the main dining hall or with the Tech Spot and these dining services are offered by Sodexo. So we have 40 plus student clubs and organizations on campus. That's very important for you, the student, because um, 
statistics have repeatedly showed that when students are involved in student clubs and organizations on campus, they have a, a better fit to campus, they are happier, they usually uh, perform better academically, just gives you that well-rounded college experience that most students are looking for. And even if you're a commuter student and you don't have the residence hall dining, er, the residence hall experience and the dining experience on campus, you can also take advantage of the student clubs and organizations to be able to get involved in the campus community that way as well. And we highly recommend you do that. Uh, so we have academic organizations as well as social organizations. So for instance, the American Institute of Chemical Engineers, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, uh, SHRM, which is a Society for Human Resources Management, Biology Club, Student Nurses Association, et cetera. Uh, for our social organizations, uh, we do have student government, we have student activities board, as well as intramural sports, uh, tech alliance, we have the esports club and the international student organization. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about esports as we move forward with our different sports offerings here at tech, but that just kind of gives you a rundown. And it's a very good way for the student to be able to make those connections. Um, personally and professionally to be able to start to network professionally. You usually want to start that process before you graduate college so that, that will give you a firm foundation as you move forward and graduate and enter the working world. So outdoor recreation, is, uh, if, as you all are aware, may or may not be aware, uh, we do have a lot of outdoor recreation here in this area. Uh, it's something that sometimes folks from here, we sometimes take for granted, quite honestly. I know I myself have, uh, have done that from time to time. But uh, it, we live in a very beautiful area and there's a lot of outdoor uh, opportunities uh, to take advantage of. So we have very close proximity to uh, the New River Gorge National River, as well as the Winter Place Ski Resort. Um, you're both talking, you know, 20, 25 minutes from campus tops. Um, we have opportunities throughout Southern West Virginia for skiing, whitewater rafting, rock climbing, mountain biking, hiking, and much more. So as you guys are aware, we live in a very beautiful place and it's, uh, it's a very nice thing to be able to take advantage of those amenities. So athletics, as I was mentioning, we are the NAI division. Uh, we're part of the Appalachian Athletic Conference and the River States Conference. Uh, so we have uh, men's and women's sports here. Uh, we have baseball, basketball, cross country, esports, as I mentioned, is now a sport here at Tech. So um, students that are interested in that uh, could reach out to us and we can get you information on that or any of our sports teams if you're interested. We also have women's teams, basketball, cross country, esports as well, soccer, softball, et cetera. Um, 62 all conference student athletes, 36 uh, scholars athletes, 12 NAI all Americans, seven NAI scholar athletes. So we, we are very, uh, we perform very well academically and athletically. So, and that's what we always tell students first, your student athletes, winning is important, but your student first, and we excel in both fields. Talk to you a moment about campus safety. So they're top priority for us at WU Tech. Um, all W Tech police officers are also state certified police officers. Uh, public areas are monitored by constant video surveillance. And we also utilize the Live Safe app system. So those of you that are familiar, you can install that on your phone. Uh, you can check in with loved ones or if you'll be walking across campus and you want to do a virtual walk, they can see where you're walking to make sure that you get to where you're getting at the time that you're supposed to. Uh, some things to kind of put some, some minds at ease there if you need to utilize those services. We have an extremely safe campus here in Beckley. And uh, we also have that tech alert emergency text messaging system. That's important from several um, vantage points. Uh, the most common use for that will be if there's inclement weather situations that you run into. As we get into the uh, winter and early spring, um, you will see um, tech alerts that are sent out if there's something happening on campus with inclement weather or a delay or if campus is shut down for the day you'll get that information there so it's a very good resource to take advantage of service and learning is very important to us at tech as well um, we have logged over 7,000 service hours since 2017 we're affiliated with 30 plus community partner organizations in the area here and some of the major projects that we have done in the past have been the community closet and food distribution, the Martin Luther King Junior Day of Service, uh, the W Tech Service Week, new student orientation service projects, and alternative spring break. 
Now, of course, these do look a little different this year. There are still uh, virtual ways that we have uh, students that can participate in community activities, and we have been doing that since everything has happened since March. But there's a lot of ways to still give back to the community and be involved in service and learning here on our campus and in our community, and we strongly encourage students to do that. So now a bit about our campus success programs. So I talked about, you know, instructors primary responsibility being teaching and advising. We also do have a campus success programs through our student success center, uh, accessibility services for students needing those services, uh, personal counseling, student health services, as well as I was saying as a student success center. And these are uh, free services to students to utilize all these. Um, student Success Center provides first year advising services for students, as well as academic tutoring and assistance. So if you're having any issues in any subject matter disciplines that you may be studying in your classes, uh, we can put you in touch with the Student Success Center once you're a student, and then they can deploy those resources and get tutors available for you, and that's offered to the student free of charge. We also have student support services offered via TRIO, which is a federally grant uh, funded program also. A word about graduate school opportunities here now. Um, now this is not an exhaustive list or anything like that, just, just kind of gives you a general idea of graduate school opportunities for former uh, W Tech students. As you can see, pretty uh, diverse uh, array here. So of course, WVU and Morgantown have a lot of students that will attend graduate school there, uh, as well as Radford University uh, down in Virginia, University of Tennessee, Virginia Tech, uh, a few students at the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine over in Lewisburg. Uh, Marshall University as well, uh, W School of Law, um, and then we have some others that are a little further away, uh, such as the University of Missouri, uh, Georgia Tech, University of Kansas, Louisiana Tech, to name a few. So we have a lot of graduate school opportunities here at Tech once a student would graduate, and if they want to attend uh, advanced studies, there's a lot of opportunities for them to do that. A little bit now about where our graduates work. So where our graduates work, again, this is not an all-inclusive list here or anything, just gives you a really good idea of where um, our graduates land upon graduation. So uh, American Electric Power, uh, TransCanada Corporation, uh, the FBI, Army Corps Engineers, NASA, uh, for you gamers out there, Blizzard Entertainment, uh, if you're familiar uh, with Warcraft or any of that, that that's the uh, developer that makes those. Uh, also Emerson down in Charlotte, North Carolina area, Rockwell Automation, AT&T, um, and we do see some uh, government entities in this list as well. FBI, Federal Bureau of Prisons, uh, Division of Highways and Department of Transportation. Um, and Toyota is also a very, very big, uh, important relationship for us at Tech with our engineering students. We have a lot of engineering students will, that will land there and we have, a very, as I said, a close relationship with Toyota. So life after college, um, that's something that initially maybe a lot of students may not give as much thought initially, um, but it is very important and it's something to be mindful of kind of going in. Um, so we do offer career planning support. Uh, we do have cooperative education programs. We call them co-ops for short. It's essentially think of it as a, uh, as a uh, boosted paid internship. So that way uh, many students will, will opt to do that Typically your first semester, we'd prefer that you not. And then after that, you can alternate between semesters of school and work. It may take you a little longer to graduate, but you will also be able to earn money while you are going to school and you'll be able to have a job waiting on you in many situations by the time you graduate. So that's a very important thing to, to mention there. Of course, we do have internships and job placement services, and we do have resume building experiences that can help you with our career services department. Career services has a lot of relationships, as I was talking about in the prior slides, to a lot of different employers, not just in the immediate ge geographic area, but in the more distant areas as well, up and down the eastern seaboard and throughout. So there's a lot of uh, uh, relationships that we have there that we can help connect you with these employers, and that is very, very powerful for the student. So a little bit about test optional. This is a little different this year with everything that's happened with, uh, with COVID-19 and everything. So this is new for spring and fall 21. Uh, we are currently in the process of updating a lot of this information and everything on our website and everything as well. So that'll be available very, very soon. So test optional applicants are not required to submit an ACT or SAT score at the time of your application submission. 
These applicants can be reviewed and admitted to the institution based on their high school GPA alone, pending this meets internal review standards set forth by the Office of Admissions. Um, please note, this does not apply to engineering and pre-nursing programs. Uh, we do have to have scores to place you in those programs. If you don't have scores, don't worry. Um, we can still process you if you meet the general admissions requirements and process you as a general uh, education student and you would move into those uh, degree programs within time. But um, that is kind of a thing I wanted to point out there as well. Um, you will pursue this process. You must select the test optional when completing your application. It'll be an option on the online application that we have that you want to, you basically declare that you are test optional if you want to go that route. Um, test for ACT or SAT or placement scores, Alex, may be required for some, uh, for registration into some math courses. So if you're going into the higher level math, math courses initially, or you're wanting to, you will need placement for that, such as Calculus 1, et cetera. Um, you'll have to have test scores be placed into those higher levels. Um, details can be found at our admissions.wtech.edu website or by contacting your admissions counselor uh, directly. And we can give you uh, information about that whenever you reach out to us. Um, you can still send your ACT and SAT scores as a test optional applicant. This can help you improve potential scholarship opportunities. That's something else to keep in mind as well. There's, there might be more scholarship dollars available to you that way, depending on your situation. And if you have any questions or anything about this as, we, as you go throughout the admissions process with us, you can reach out to us directly and the admissions council will guide you through this process. So now a little bit of information about financial aid. So if you are interested in receiving financial aid or scholarships, please be sure to file the FAFSA as soon as possible. I think that the uh, FAFSA opened up on October 1st. So you'll see that we have one WVU system FAFSA code. So it's at 003827. Uh, feel free to write this information down if you'd like, but don't feel the need that you have to. All this is on our website. So you can get that information there as well. Um, also, you can, we can put you in touch with the financial aid staff that can help you and guide you through any particular questions that you may have in, in your individual circumstance. Um, also, some guidance in completing the FAFSA and more scholarship information is available on our financial aid.wtech.edu webpage. So for admissions and contact information, you can see uh, we do have several platforms that you can reach out to us at. Uh, so we do have UChat, which is instant messaging at the bottom of all W Tech admissions pages. So if you were running across a question or anything that you would happen to see while you're perusing our website, you can reach out to someone via UChat directly during normal business hours of 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. So and then you can get an answer back relatively instantaneously. So if, if it's something that you uh, are concerned about or something you're unclear about when you're looking at our website about the admissions process. Uh, you can also schedule one-on-one -on -one phone call with your admissions counselor. Um, and that's the phone number. That's a general uh, admissions line at Tech is at 304-929-0311 number. Uh, the email address, that's our admissions vanity account, tech-admissions at mail.wu.edu. And then our mailing address is 410 Neville Street, Beckley, 25801. Again, all this information is on our website. So when you get to that point of the process that you would like to reach out to us, it's very easy to find on our admissions.wtech.edu webpage. You will see that information listed prominently. So jumpstart your college career. Um, so for high school juniors, 2022, seniors 21, we offer early enrollment courses. So many colleges and universities throughout the state of West Virginia and elsewhere do this. It's a very good opportunity for you, the student, to be able to get um, some of those college level courses under your belt before you would begin your official uh, freshman year of college. And you can do, do so at quite a bargain here. So for spring 21, our start date is going to be on Wednesday, January 19th. Uh, our online registration is currently available, so you can go ahead and do that now if, if you're interested. And that semester would end on Friday, April 30th. So for tuition, um, three hour course is gonna be 75 bucks, so $25 per credit hour, plus the cost of your textbook. That is a very, very good bargain. Um, and it, again, it is a way for you to, to maybe address some of your general education core requirements or your general educational foundational courses as we call them. Think of English 101, 102, those sorts of courses that you will need as you begin your college career. Many students will go ahead and do those 
while they're still in high school through our early enrollment program. It's a very good bargain for the student. Um, you can only take two college classes per semester and online and in-seat courses are available. So there's more information available for that. If you have any questions, uh, we can put you in touch with the right folks to be able to get more information about that. So something else I'd like to talk about here is our fall open house. Uh, we just had one not too long ago on the 24th of October. We will have another one coming up on Saturday, November 21st. Again, it is a virtual event as the 24th, October 24th date was. So it's a really good opportunity for students and families to learn about our campus. Um, you can talk about where we uh, live, work, learn and play. You'll also learn about our facilities and including the classrooms and high tech labs where we'll be learning your trade. We'll talk about that. Um, you can also explore student life at Tech. So you'll hear from our Dean of Students that will give you a lot of information about that, about student life. They'll walk you through all the different programs and clubs you can be a part of and the fun activities that you can take part in. Um, they'll also share information on support services, healthcare services, such as our student health clinic, our counseling center, and campus safety. It kind of gives you everything that you're going to need to know about being a student at Tech in a nice uh, condensed format there. It's very useful for students and families to attend. So we highly uh, recommend that you come join us for that uh, Saturday, November 21st date. Um, we'll also talk more about our residence hall living. Uh, if you're thinking about living on campus, uh, you'll learn more about their residence halls and meet with residence hall staff who can answer your questions about campus life. Uh, we'll have breakout sessions for student life and for residence hall, as well as with, for financial aid. You can find out more information about that too. So, um, you and your family have a chance to sit down one-on-one -on -one with a financial aid counselor during those sessions. They'll walk you through everything you're, you're going to need to know throughout the process, like the types of financial aid available, the FAFSA, what it costs to earn your degree, and anything else that you may want to know regarding the financial aid process. So there are no dumb questions at Open House. Uh, we, we will be able to assist you with any questions about anything that you may have, anything that you're unclear about, or anything that you may be curious about that you never asked before. Um, about regarding college life, we can we can help you out with that. And this is an excellent opportunity for parents and students to take advantage of to kind of get all the information that you need in, in a really nice condensed program. So we encourage you to stay connected with us. Uh, we have uh, three different uh, forms of social media that we have here. We have on Facebook, uh, Twitter, and Instagram. So you can see all of our handles there for the various social media platforms. We highly recommend that you um, take part in those and, and join us on those social media campaigns. That way we, you can see what we're up to. You can see different events that we're going to be having on campus. You can get that information in real time. Uh, you can interact with us on uh, social media through these various handles as well. So it's a really good way to stay on top of what might be occurring on campus or the new uh, things that we have going on that we'd like to share with uh, the community at large at Tech. So it's a very good way to do that. So now I will um, open this up to any questions. Um, so this is my name, Dwayne Ewing. I'm an admissions counselor, of course, and there's my email address and there is my direct uh, phone line that you can contact me. And of course, you can contact us via the UChat platform. Or any, or you can schedule a phone call as well. But if you just, if you have any questions and you wanna reach out to me directly, there's my information. By all means, free, feel free to do that. We're here to help you. We'll do anything we can to help you answer any questions you may have. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to post those in our chat. And then uh, Jordan will take a look at those and I will try to answer those live here in the last few uh, minutes that we have here available. Yeah, so far during the presentation, uh, we didn't have any, but like Dwayne said, uh, feel free. Uh, we finished with plenty of time to answer any of your questions on screen. So feel free to ask away. Going to give a minute or so for typing time because I see all three that joined us are actually still in the room. And feel free, any questions you guys may have, we'll, we'll more than happy to answer them for you. And then, as I said, if there's any questions that may would occur to you later, you know, you can reach out to us as well. So feel free to ask away. 
Yeah. It could ha- it could be anything. It could be about a program of study. It could be about campus. It could be about the application process, registration. Uh, not going to call anybody out in particular by name on screen, but I do know uh, that one of the people that have uh, joined today is a tech admit for certain. I do know that I admitted that person. That's great. To uh, here we have a question. Does an incoming freshman have to live on campus? Did, did you want to answer that, Dwayne, or do you want me to do it? I can. I can. Yeah, right ahead, then. So if you're an incoming freshman, uh, you do not have to live on campus if you are within a 50-mile radius of campus. If you're living at home with your parents, you're able to commute if you elect to do that. Uh, but you, if you want to live in the residence halls, you can, but you're not required to. That is a good question. Very good. And I'll piggyback off of that, too. Um, you know, if you do decide if you're in that 50 mile range and you do commute to campus, uh, a good investment would be a parking pass. Absolutely. So uh, those are available to students, faculty, staff uh, annually. Uh, you'll talk about that during your registration process, your orientation process. Or if you have any questions beforehand, uh, we can always put you in contact with student accounts and they can take care of getting that parking pass for you. That's a good point, Jordan. And that's something else uh, kind of picking back off of that. Um, so if you are a freshman, of course, you are allowed to have a car on campus. You can you can park on our campus in some schools. You can't some of the larger institutions in the state. You can't as a freshman, um, but you can on our campus. Also, one more thing I just want to throw into, because like I said, I know at least one of the maybe more, but I do know at least one of the names of the students that have joined us today are admitted tech students. And I want to point out to everyone that as you were completing your uh, last year of high school, uh, keep in mind, usually around April uh, or mid April, late April, early May, uh, we will start sending out communications. We will start uh, publishing things on our website regarding uh, the new student registration process. Uh, this past cycle with the pandemic, that was a virtual Zoom uh, advising session with our Student Success Center. Uh, we don't know if it'll be in person or, or Zoom moving forward, but definitely be on the lookout for a new student registration RSVP form. Uh, how is the cross country program? You want, you want to answer that one, Doyen? I'll let you go ahead. And okay, okay, I'll, I'll answer that one. Uh, cross country and track and field are actually housed in the same athletic program. So the same coaches, uh, Coach Bloom, uh, I believe Coach uh, Bruce Cox is still uh, affiliated with the program as well. Um, but Jeremy Bloom is the front facing coach on that program. Uh, very competitive. We've had, uh, we've had, I believe we had a, don't, don't quote me here. I know this is recorded and, and, and put on to uh, YouTube for later, but I do believe we had a student in one competition go to and win nationals the year before last. I might, might have been a race walker. I do believe so. It was a race walker, but, but all, all the uh, cross country uh, track and field uh, program, they're, they're very competitive at the conference level and the national level. And they actually have a pretty solid number of uh, students that compete on that team. So it's more than just a, a hobby. I mean, it's really when you get here, that's a full scale program and that's one that's very popular. It's a good question. That's if you have great. not, I mean, if you've been recruited by the team, that that's awesome. Uh, if you haven't been recruited, feel free to reach out to our office. Just say, hey, I'm interested. Uh, I did cross country in high school. Um, how would I talk to the coach about potentially trying out for that team? And we'll, we'll put you in contact. You can also check out goldenbearathletics.com. And there is an athletic uh, contact section where you can find the coach's email, phone number, and reach out yourself. Completely up to you. Uh, but if you've been recruited already in the process, congratulations. We can't wait to have you on campus. Very good point. Very good point. And uh, something else too, just to kind of mention as an aside regarding scholarships. So if um, talking about academic scholarships and athletic scholarships, they are usually uh, bundled together. The coaches of each respective team has, they handle that process. So that's something to kind of keep in mind there as well. Um, that would be a combination of the, if you qualify the academic side of the house and the athletic side of the house potentially. So that's something to keep in mind. Definitely, definitely. Good question so far. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, in all honesty, you know, we're very accessible. Our coaches are very accessible. Um, if you have any questions uh, between now and the time you are, you're admitted, now between the time you apply, uh, so on and so forth, feel free to let us know. You know, we can answer any questions you may have. We can put you in contact with people who can. We know financial aid is a big question for uh, applicants and for admitted students, um, but just make sure um, 
just, just make sure to reach out and we'll put you in the right contact. Uh, how soon after applying do you hear about acceptance? Um, it, it's usually between a seven to 10 day turnaround, uh, mainly because of the pandemic that we're in right now. Uh, Dwayne is actually, you're, you're talking to the point man for our uh, letter generation for our admitted students. Uh, he runs it, was it twice a week, Dwayne? Uh, two to three times a week. Yeah. Two to three times a week. And, and as a matter of fact, like I said, I know you guys can't see the questions you've asked, but uh, uh, I, I will venture to say the, uh, the the person who just asked that question, you, you should be hearing something fairly soon because I, I did see your name the other day. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you have any questions about that or you just want to follow up with us, uh, you can give us a call if you want to know sooner. Um, but, uh, you know, I can't, I can't technically tell you, um, you know, over this, you know, for, for purpose of the application process and the, uh, uh, you know, the admissions letter and the, you know, the time frame. But I, I can definitely answer questions if you give us a call or an email. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, any of us would be more than happy to answer your questions if you have any regarding an acceptance letter or if you've had an application and if you have any questions about what you may need to complete that or anything at all. Um, we're we're all here to help. So definitely feel free to reach out to us. Very yeah. accessible. Yeah, we definitely appreciate you guys staying on here. I know I know one's already jumped off, but uh, if either the other two have any more questions, we've still got a couple more minutes that we can we can stretch it out. Um, just you know, if, if that if that's all, you feel free to jump off the call. It's it's completely up to you. All right, guys, are you ready to turn it over? Yeah, I believe we've had a little delay there uh, since the last question. You should be good to take it over. All right, so we'll finish out by once again thanking you for joining. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick survey and any feedback you can give on that is greatly appreciated. Also, this is just one of the many sessions being hosted. So please be sure to sign up for additional sessions at wbacrao.org. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording on that same website as well. So again, thank you for joining. I hope you all have a great evening. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you.